In the next two videos, we'll be building and animating this awesome responsive pie chart. You can click on each one of these recessed icons on the right side to load in your data, and you can click each piece again to fade the data back out so you can highlight only what you need. In today's video, we will be building the base of this slide, and then in the next one, we'll be animating all of the functions. I'm Aaron Limpany. Let's get started. As always, we'll start by creating a new blank slide, then come up to the Design tab, hit Format Background, keep it at Solid Fill, and then change our fill color to our main gray color, which is going to be E7E8ED. And for all of you PC users out there, I'm going to be including the decimal codes for all of the colors used in this video in the description. Once you have the background color in place, we're going to go back to the Home tab, we're going to create a shape, and we're just going to create a circle. Click and drag while holding shift to create your circle, then come over to the shape menu and we're gonna change the height and width both to 14 centimeters. Then we'll click and drag on the circle while holding shift until we see it snap to the center of the slide. And then we see that this is 2.53 centimeters from the top of the slide, that's the vertical position. So we're gonna change the horizontal position to the same thing, 2.53 centimeters. Next, we'll go back over to the fill tab. We're gonna click no line and then we're gonna change the fill color to the same color gray that we just created. Next, we'll go to the Shadow tab, and we're going to add a drop shadow using the first preset here, and then we're going to change the shadow color to our shadow gray color, which is hex code A1A5B9. You'll set your transparency at 60%, keep the size at 100, change the blur to 20 points, the angle is going to stay at 45, and change the distance to 10 points. Next, just hit Command or Control C and Command or Control V to paste the circle, and then you're going to drag it in place over the existing circle, and it'll snap in place. Then we'll change the shadow color to our light shadow color, which is hex code FC, 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 hit OK. We're going to change the transparency to 25%, leave the size at 100, leave the blur at 20, and change the angle to 225. Next, we're going to select both of these circles and hit Option Command G to group, or you can right click and hit group. Then we'll copy and paste these circles in place and we're going to change the sizing to 6.25 by 6.25 centimeters. We're going to drop these in place approximately at the center of the larger circles. Don't worry if it's not perfectly aligned because we'll adjust that in a second. Then you'll select the top circle here and we're going to make an adjustment to the shadow. We're just going to change the transparency of the light shadow to 60%. With this top circle still selected, copy and paste it in place and then we're going to change the size to 3.75 by 3.75 centimeters. Then we'll go back to the fill tab and we'll change this to a gray fill. Set the angle at 45 degrees and that'll probably be your default when it starts out. Change this first color to the main gray color that we created and change the second color to the light shadow color that we created. Then grab the left slider and move it over to 50%. Finally go up to the shadow tab and change the preset to the first inner shadow. Then change the shadow color to our shadow gray that we created earlier and change the settings to transparency at 60%, blur 15 points, angle 225 and distance of seven. Finally, just drag this circle in place at the center. Next, just double click over here in the field to create a text box and type in favorite pies. We're gonna select the whole text box and we're gonna change the font to Gibson Medium. And then we're gonna change the font size to 36. Then we're gonna click on text options and we're gonna change the text color to a new darker text color, which is gonna be hex code 7C8090. Finally, we'll go back to shape options. We'll go to the size panel, change the horizontal position to 20 centimeters and the vertical position to 4.5 centimeters. Next, we're gonna insert our icons. So come over to the insert tab and click on icons. Now, even though these are gonna go on top, it'll be a lot easier to put all the icons in together, especially since we'll be converting some to shapes to add the gradients, and then they'll behave a little differently. So we wanna get all the icons in place before we do that. So we're just gonna search for our icons and then add each of these. We've just inserted all six of our icons, so I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit better so that you can see them, but that's how they'll appear when you insert them. Then we're gonna select all of these together by clicking on each while holding Shift, We'll go over to Format Graphic, we'll go to Size, and we're gonna change the size to 1.96 centimeters for each, except we're gonna re-click on this key lime right here, and it's a little wider than the others, so we're actually gonna change this to 1.72 centimeters. Next, we're gonna just click and drag to place these approximately where they'll end up on the pie chart. Now, this isn't gonna to be totally final at this point, we'll make adjustments later, but just kinda of put them in place so you see how this is gonna look. 
Then you're gonna click on each one while holding shift again to select them all. And you're gonna hit Commander Control C, Commander Control V to paste. And then we'll go over to the size panel and we'll change the height and width to 1.25 centimeters. Then we'll go back over to the graphics format tab. We'll hit align and we'll align all of these center. And then clicking on each of these individually, we're gonna arrange them from top to bottom in the same order that they're found going clockwise on this pie chart, starting with the apple. So just click and drag while holding shift to keep them aligned and put them all in place. Once you've got them in the right order, as you're arranging these, just make sure that the apple and the peanut are right where you want them to be, the first and last ones, because then we're gonna select all of these icons and we're gonna go to arrange, align, and distribute vertically. And that way they're all spaced out evenly. Then we're gonna drag all of these until they align with the left side of the text box for favorite pies. And actually this text box looks a little low now, so we're gonna change the vertical position to 3.45 centimeters. That looks better. Next, we're gonna select all these icons again and we're gonna duplicate them with Command C and Command V. And then we're gonna drag them in place over the old ones. Then we're gonna come up to graphics format and we're gonna open the selection pane. Now that we see these are the top six, we're gonna go ahead and select each one, see which one it is and rename them. Now these ones are going to end up being our pressed buttons. So we're gonna name these the name of the fruit or food item that they represent along with the word pressed. So for example, this one is going to be key lime pressed. So go ahead and name each one of these. All right, so we've named each one, but as you notice, they're not in the same order that they appear from top to bottom on this side. And that's because of the order that we inserted the icons from our stock images section. So what you can do is just rearrange by clicking and dragging on each one of these names until they're in the right order. Perfect, now that we have all those in order, go ahead and click and drag to select this entire section. Now you'll see the next six items are our other six icons that are below the ones that we've just put in the selection pane here. So this is graphic 23 through graphic 28. We're gonna rename these in a second for the time being. Just go ahead and hide each one of these by clicking the I tool next to it. That way when we click and drag over a selection, we are only selecting the icon that we can see right now. Now that's important because we're gonna click and drag over all of these icons. We'll go to the graphics format tab and we'll hit convert to shape. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch of shapes created for the key lime and the strawberry but we're gonna leave those B for the time being because that way when we select all of these, all these individual shapes are selected. If you just group these now and then try and change the colors, weird things happen. So select all of the shapes, come over to the format shape panel and hit gradient fill. And look at that, our gradient is already captured from the center circle, so we're good to go there. Then come over to the shadow tab and we're gonna change to an inner shadow from top left. We're gonna change the shadow color to our shadow color that we've been using. We're gonna keep all the settings except we're gonna bump down the distance to two. Next, we're gonna go back to the selection pane. We're gonna select all of the key lime options by clicking the first and last while holding shift. And we're gonna hit option command G to group. We're gonna rename the group, you guessed it, key lime pressed. And we're gonna do the same thing for the two shapes in the strawberry section. Perfect, then we're just gonna collapse these two items. Finally, we're just gonna select all of these icons and send them to the back. Then we'll go back in the selection pane and we'll click on the eyes next to each of these icons to unhide them. And then we're gonna do the same thing and hide all of the pressed icons that we just created. Then we'll click and drag to select and we're gonna go to graphics format and convert these icons to shapes. Now we're gonna be recoloring each one of these icons individually to match the gradient of each of the pie sections. So we're gonna do those colors at the same time so that the gradient carries over and we don't have to do the same work multiple times. So just click off of those for now and then we're gonna figure out the names of each one of these icons and name them on the panel in the selection pane so that we don't get confused. So first just click on the apple, find which one gets highlighted in the selection pane and then just rename each one of these icons the name of the food item plus big. And then once you've named them, just click and drag to reorder so that they're in the same order when you start with the apple and go around the circle clockwise. Great, and finally, while we're in the selection pane, select this big circle group, and you're gonna rename this one background circle. Then click the center circle group, this outside one, and you're gonna rename that center circle raised. And finally, click the center circle and rename it center circle pressed. Awesome. Lastly, click on favorite pies and rename it favorite pies. And with this text box still selected, we're just gonna duplicate it by clicking and dragging while holding option. And we're gonna change the font to Gibson Light and then change the font weight to 20. Align this top one on the center of this Apple icon and then click and drag while holding option and shift to duplicate straight down. You don't have to worry about the alignment of these center ones, but make sure that this last 
text box ends up middle aligned with the peanut icon at the bottom. Once you have the first and last text boxes aligned, you're gonna select all of these text boxes. You're gonna to go to arrange, align, and distribute vertically. Then you're gonna select the text in each text box and rename each text box to the name of the pie type. Once you have the pie names in place, reselect all six of these text boxes and click and drag while holding Option and Shift to drag these out to the right. Then change the font weight to Gibson Medium, and then change each of these text boxes to a percentage. So from top to bottom, these are gonna be 30%, 15%, 8%, 10%, 25%, and 12%. And if you don't like the position, you can always shift these a little bit. I think I want them just a little more to the right. Now, finally, we're gonna zoom back out a little bit and we're gonna add a shape, and we're gonna come down under Basic Shapes and add this one, which is called Pi. We're gonna click and drag while holding Shift to get a big round shape. Then we're gonna come over into the format shape panel. We're gonna to go to size and we're gonna change the size on both to 12.5 centimeters. Little trick too, if you check this box, the lock aspect ratio button, you can also check it up here in the shape format tab at the top. When you click that, anytime you make adjustments to the shape size, it'll adjust both the height and width at the same time. We'll come back over to the fill tab, we'll hit no line, then we'll align this pie centrally on the circles here. Again, don't worry if it's not perfect yet because we're gonna align all of these objects with each other in just a minute. We're gonna start by leaving the top handle in place and then we're gonna grab this handle on the right side, move it all the way up until the line disappears. And then we're gonna grab the other handle and we're gonna drag it out until we hit about 30%. So right here, we're at about 25%. And we're gonna go just a little bit more until we hit about 30%, but not quite a third. And we're just gonna come up here and hit send backward until we see it disappear behind the center circle and the apple icon. Then we're gonna go over to fill options and we're gonna hit gradient fill and we're gonna move this left handle all the way to the left and we're gonna change the first color to hex code 76C13D. Then we're gonna leave the right stop where it is and we're gonna change its color to hex code C7D52F. Now before we add the second pie section, we're gonna click on this icon on the right side that we've turned into a shape. We're gonna change it to a gradient fill and look at that, same gradient we just created gets applied. Look at how much time we'll save by doing it this way. Next, we're gonna click back on our pie and we're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna drag this back in place until it approximately aligns. And then we're gonna change the shape so that the end of it goes about 15% past the end of the first pie and the beginning lines up with the edge of the first pie that we created. Now remember this first section was about 30%, so we want this to be exactly half of it. And 30 plus 15 is 45. We know that 50% is right here, so we want this to be about five degrees off, so that probably looks about right, maybe a little bit less there. Then again, we're gonna hit send backward until this disappears behind the key lime icon and behind the central circles. Now, before we change the color of this pie and the icons, we need to group all of the shapes in the key lime and all the shapes in the strawberry. So click and drag to select, hit Option Command G. Now we've got the group created. Go to the selection pane, you'll see where this group sits and go ahead and change the name of this to Key Lime Gradient and do the same for the strawberry. And while we're in the selection pane, go ahead and rename all the rest of these shapes as well. And once you've renamed them all, go ahead and click and drag to put them in order from top to bottom. Now we can reselect this pie. We can go back to the format shape. We can also click on the key lime and we can click gradient fill for both at the same time. Now we'll change the first fill color on these to hex code 7BB002 and change the second fill color to hex code 549F1A. Now, as you go around the circle, we might need to change the angle of this gradient a little bit. So select just the pie for a moment and under this gradient fill, let's change the angle so that it starts with this lighter color right about here and ends with the darker color right about here. So that's gonna be angle about eh, 90. Now we'll follow the same process of duplicating the pie segments, selecting these icons and changing the gradient colors. So I'll skip the parts where I duplicate the pie sections, put them in place and change to the percentages that you see here, but I will show you the colors you'll need and they are also in the description if I'm going a little fast for you. So for the cherry, let's change the angle to about 170. The first color to FF3140 and the second color to A9233C. For the strawberry, we'll change the first color to FF448D and the second color to A9278D. And then on just the pie, we're gonna change the angle to 180. For the pumpkin, let's change the first stop to F88D1C and the second to c 56 D36. And then we'll deselect the icon and we'll change this angle to 235. And then finally for the peanut, we'll change the first stop to E9C4 
6C and change the second stop to B6914F and then change the angle to 300. Great, now your slide should look about like this. Now you can double check to make sure that the angles on all these icon gradients are correct. All of these should be 45 degrees. We only wanted to change the direction of the actual pies so that it kind of flows around the circle instead of going in a different direction. Now we need to make sure that everything in the pie chart itself is aligned. So go ahead and select everything and while holding shift, click on each one of these icons to deselect them and then go up to align, align center, and align, align middle. And now all of your pies are perfectly aligned. Next, you'll just individually select each icon and put it about in the center of each block. Now there's not a science to this, it's just about what looks right because each icon is constructed differently. So just put them where they look good to you. Great, that looks about right to me. And now go ahead and click and while holding shift, select all six of these icons. And we're gonna change the color back to our light shadow color. Now, as you can see, we've put so many gradients in place that it's no longer in our recent colors. So go back to more colors. And again, this is hex code FCFCFC. And finally, let's go back to the selection pane and then just click the eye icon next to all of the pressed in icons. That way they'll all reveal from here. Now we're just gonna rename some layers and then we'll be done with the slide construction and ready to animate. Let's start by scrolling down to the bottom and in each section where you see these pies, just go ahead and click on each one and rename it to the name of the food item plus the word pie. So this one, for example, is selected here. You can see which one it is because it's between the two yellow squares. So this one is the cherry one. So we'll double click and rename it cherry pie and do the same for the rest. And as you can see, I've renamed each one of these and I've reordered them in the same order that they go counterclockwise, starting with Apple. Now, before we do anything else, I want you to select all of the pressed icons and I want you to click and drag all the way up top, A, just so we can verify that they still look how they're supposed to, and B, because this is gonna make it easier to select them in our animation pane. And then I want you to click on all of the gradient icons and drag these up above the pressed buttons and perfect, that looks great. These will stay at the top of our selection pane. So now we're gonna rename all of these text boxes. All of them are currently named favorite pies because we duplicated this title to make them. So click it in the selection pane and you'll see the corresponding text box highlighted in the field over here. So just rename it in the selection pane, the same text that we have it written in the field. And as you can see, I've reordered each of these sections in the same order that they appear in the field top to bottom. And that's it. I know that step is super tedious, but please make sure to name all of these because it's gonna make your life way easier when we go to animate this slide in the next video. Well done today, everyone, and I'll have the animation video out in just a couple of days, so please make sure to subscribe and click that bell to get notified when it comes out. This animation is super cool and it's one of my favorites, so I'm excited to share it with you. Anyways, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time.